But the reason that you're here is because your self-awareness, your self-approval, which drives your commitment. In order for people to, to escape the matrix, they must unlearn the things that they've been indoctrinated with, unlearn the things that have been downloaded in them between ages zero and seven, based upon their environment, the people they see, the culture that they're born in, it governs their behavior years later. And so what you're doing is saying, escape the matrix. As speakers, as coaches, as entrepreneurs, what you do is distract, dispute, and inspire. How people live their lives as a result of the story they believe about themselves. They begin to see their lives through your eyes. And as a result of that encounter, their lives will never be the same again. So you know, most people go to concerts and they're excited because they have a backstage pass. Well, as an entrepreneur, I'm very excited for the people we coach and the people that we mentor to have backstage mentorship. So every time we do an event, we have uh, speakers that come out to our events. I always ask part of the negotiation process. Can we spend some time with you when you're done off stage? When we're done hiring you for the keynote speaker, we're hiring you for the keynote interview on stage. Can our top guys have access to you and have a conversation with you backstage? Because those are insights. Those are nuggets that are the most exciting because it's in a more relaxed environment. They're supercharged. Their emotions are high. And so these are one of the little things I like doing for our guys, which is mastermind conversations behind the scenes with our keynote speakers. Hope you enjoy this. You have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, this is Les Brown. You're watching the Seven Figure Squad podcast. You got to be hungry. Stay tuned because what you tune into, you turn into. You sell the messenger. I sell the message. When the disciples were amazed at the miracles that Jesus had performed, he said, these things ye shall do, and greater things shall ye do. The people helping people, culture, the dynamic it has in this country at this point in time is helping people to do the greater work. See, it's one thing to say, I believe in God. That's easy. That's lip service. But you want to back it up with life service. That we are to be productive, not to go through life as volunteer victims. Most people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65. And when you speak to them about people helping people, building a community of greatness, you are calling them out of the tombs of media. I didn't call for an Uber. Don't come for me. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest failure that I learned, don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. I didn't do this for years because I don't have a college education. Because people told me and I told myself that I can't compete with people with PhDs and MBAs and years of corporate experience that I don't have. I can't develop the level of credibility that AT&T, Procter & Gamble's, McDonald Corporation, General Electric, IBM. I, I was earning at that time around $3,000 a month. And the person who trained me, Mike Williams, who wrote a book called The Road to Your Best Stuff, he said, the only reason you're making $3,000 a month is because you don't have the awareness and the sense of self-worth that you can get $5,000, $25,000 an hour. I just turned down an engagement in Ireland, and they offered me a rate of $175,000 for an hour but my international rate is 225,000. I remember the time if you offered me $175,000, I'd have my mama bake you a sweet potato pie. <laughs> I'd borrow all my children to clean your house. <laughs> but the reason that you're here is because your self-awareness, 
your self-approval, which drives your commitment. And when you are committed to changing your life, you engage in actions that you have some fulfillment, you accomplish some things, and you continue to be in an ongoing learning process. We, we are where Peter Drucker, he said, we must be willing to unlearn, learn, and relearn. In order for people to, to escape the matrix, they must unlearn the things that they've been indoctrinated with, unlearn the things that have been downloaded in them between ages zero and seven, based upon their environment, the people they see, the values that exist there, the culture that they're born in, it governs their behavior years later. And so what you're doing is saying, escape the matrix. As speakers, as coaches, as entrepreneurs, what you do is distract, dispute, and inspire. How people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. So when you come and talk to someone about escaping the matrix, a life of mediocrity, you can't fit a big dream into a small mindset, that you distract them from their current story. And through your presentation, helping them to see the possibilities of having a new life, you dismantle their current belief system where they feel stuck and you inspire them to say, I'm going to do something about this. I'm hungry for a new life because they begin to see their lives through your eyes. And as a result of that encounter, their lives will never be the same again. I have a question. I have a question. Yes, sir. The, the question I have for you is this. Um, there is a reasonable level, I would imagine. Like, you must read a lot of books. Yes, I do. A lot of books because the way you produce words and the way you, you know, kind of the, the fluency of your words is not ordinary. I admire what you're doing. I, I also follow uh, Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. you know, so I watch you. I watch Tony. My question to you is this. In terms of the personal development, you know, and the type of books that you read, you know, um, first, I'd like to know how many books do you actually read? I read 30 to 40 pages a day. Lord have mercy. The average American reads one book a year. Okay. If you make a conscious, deliberate intention yes. to read one book a month in an area that you have an interest in, in mine, mine was storytelling. How do you transform people's lives with their story? How do you tell your story strategically so people will see themselves in your story and take that on? and see that as the key to unlocking a new future for themselves. I studied that. Is it possible that I can speak to a room full of strangers that don't know me and, and speak in a way, speaking from my heart and sharing the things I've overcome? I'm a, you're looking at a man who received the Cancer Centers of America Award of Perseverance. I'm a 39-year fourth stage prostate cancer conqueror. Yes. I've kicked cancer's butt so badly, the cancer rate in my neighborhood dropped by 97. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what we, we have to, to be willing to learn, this is the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. Okay. Let me share with you, what you're going to and what you're involved in doing that Matt and Sheena have put together in this type of culture. There are people that are terrorized right now because of artificial intelligence. Mm. Over 325 million jobs will be eliminated because of artificial intelligence. But let me share something with you. What's the initials of the company? P-H- P, that H is powerful because the H stands for heart. Artificial intelligence does not have a heart. When you have a heart-centered movement, 
Where your heart is, there your treasure is also. When you speak from your heart and you look at people beyond how they see themselves and help them to begin to see a new future, you create a shift, you create a disruption. If they're going through some type of tragic situation, you let them know that tragedies are preg pregnant with new possibilities, that they're not there to, de to destroy them, but to refine them so they can up-level their skills in every dimension of their lives, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You're helping them to focus on peace, harmony, and joy. Does life be happening? Who influenced you the most? My mother. All that I am and all that I've hoped to be, my mother. My mother made me proud. She was a bad somebody. She had a third grade education. Remember I said in the video, I went to see Malcolm X. I came home and, uh, and my sister had ran to meet me. She said, Leslie, this car call from Douglas Elementary School, they say you, you, you've you named yourself Leslie X. She said, Bob is going to kill you. <laughs> she said, please change your name back. I said, okay. <laughs> My mother didn't play. I mean, she didn't play. If she gave you that look, Leslie. Yes, ma'am. I remember my, Patrick and Calvin, for the first time, we went from Columbus to Miami. And mama was giving me some directions. She wanted me to go to the store. The store and I was saying, yes, ma'am. I was very humble. And they were looking like, who is she? <laughs> that that my, my father become like a little boy. <laughs> and, and here's what you're doing. Everybody, and I want you to make a mental note of this. Everybody wants to be seen. They want to be heard and they want to be respected. Say hard respected. Yes. The, what gave me the competitive advantage in the speaking industry, the Dale Carnegie course, they teach, tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Mm. All right? Here's what I teach and train my speakers and what Mike Williams taught me. Never let what you wanna say get in the way of what your client wants to hear. And all thy getting, get understanding. Find out who they are. Mm -hmm. What's stressing them out? What gives their lives meaning? What is it that they want out of life? And speak to what's in their heart. It makes a difference. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Shin. I'll go. Yeah. I got the mic. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing, Les? Yes, sir. My name is Kendrick Williams. Thank you for your time. That's my wife right there, Brittany Williams. Um, I you seen doing? that you uh, was in close proximity with, you know, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, uh, Rosa Parks. Um, Miles Monroe. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, a bad uh, boy. Yeah. So what would you say um, to maybe, you know, the African-American African -American community about opportunity? Uh, because you were in those rooms where they was fighting for equality, and different things like that. What's your take on that? Did that drive your, you know, your, your, your business or uh, what, what impact did that yes. have? The people who are successful in this business, they don't look to the right and they don't look to the left. Keep thine eyes single. This is not a fair world. There's racism, there's discrimination, Politicians and religious leaders have the masses going at each other's throats. But you guys coming along and say, hey, in spite of this, we're building a community of greatness. People helping people. As opposed to being victimized by the economy, you're teaching people how to impact the economy by becoming a part of a community of greatness, of people helping people. All those things, they're gonna be there. They're not going anywhere. But we have a responsibility to build a legacy that will outlive us. And that we, we will be able to influence the quality of life for our children and our children's children. 
When you do that, all this stuff that's going on is not going to go away. But when you think about it, we're really not going through anything. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chesting rod, fell in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We've come over a way that with tears have been watered, we've come treading a path through the blood of the slaughter. Hey. You were born to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. That's who you are. Take unto you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand up for what you believe in because you can fall for anything. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Yes, sir. Um, powerful. Uh, and I, this is something that I've, I've been asking and I'm curious, what keeps you excited? What keeps you like... You? <laughs> when I get up in the morning, I say, Lord, whatever I face today, together you and I can handle it. And what will make this a productive day for me today, this invitation here, when I close my eyes, I've accomplished one of the most important objectives of my life, to make a difference in somebody's life before I put my head on a pillow at night. Every day, I'm looking for a way that I can inspire people, that I can give people hope. Hope, motivation, and inspiration are perfumes you can't sprinkle on others without getting a few drops on yourself. It feeds my spirit and my soul. People say, you look so young for 79. Yes, I do. When you're born, you favor your parents. But as you get older, you favor the life that you've been living. <laughs> oh, behave. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a happy camper? Yes. I laugh at my sleep. <laughs> I want y'all to go online if you haven't seen it. Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. I'm teaching people how to command an audience of 80,000 people. You see me speaking to 80,000 people. I, I was so scared I went to the bathroom seven times. <laughs> they had to come get me. Hey, Brownie, Mike Williams, he wrote the book called The Road to Your Best Stuff. Get it. I wrote the forward for it. I said, what is it? He said, it's time to come out. I said, I can't hear the voices. You can't hear the voices? He said, there are 80,000 people waiting. Dexter Yeager needs you to come out now. I said, Mike, he said, you're scared, aren't you? I said, yes. He said, Brownie, can you hear me? I said, yes. He said, do it for your mama. I said, don't use my mama. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't play the dozens. I go to the store and get some eggs. I get 11 eggs and one onion, you know. Come on. Do it for your mama, man. She's going to make you a big sweet potato pie, and she's going to talk to you and say, I am so happy for you and what you're doing. Because my family, they thought I was crazy. You know, most people, the people that are in the matrix are being practical, logical, and realistic. What you're doing with the kind of culture and the philosophy that Matt and Sheena has created is teaching people how to be unreasonable. Reasonable, logical, practical thinking people have never done anything in life. If the people that are unreasonable, logical, practical people say, if God wanted man to fly, he'd have given him wings. But the Wright brothers, they had a different mindset. They were unreasonable. They said, we can fly. And the airplane they created only was raised up off the ground for six seconds. And then they knew it was possible and it's necessary. 
And so you think to people, not only is it possible for you to have a new life, but you've got to be convicted in your spirit. It's a non-negotiable. Um, I think it, I speak for everyone when I say that it's an honor to be with you here today. It's been so emotional. Um, it's so powerful hearing your story, where you came from that story with your mom. Like, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. Um, and we hear like where you where you've gone in life. We saw the video at the beginning. What was the moment for you? That was like your moment where you said, "I've received my breakthrough in life." Like that moment where you were like, "Okay, I have done what I set out to accomplish. Now I'm just only going up from here." When my children, because when you're in pursuit of the dream, when we're talking about sacrifice, there's special occasions you're gonna. And for a period of time, they don't understand. <laughs> but when my kids say, Daddy, we want to talk to you. They say, we didn't understand why you were gone so much and why you spent so much time on the weekend in the basement listening to all those tapes. But now we understand. And we love you and we're proud of you. That, to me, was my breakthrough that my children said they love me and respect me for living a life that will outlive me and inspiring them to do the same. Yeah. Yes, um, uh, first of all, I know I know it made me emotional uh, hearing your story, but um, I, I, at some point when you accomplished and, and met your goal as far as buying your mom her home and taking care of her, what was your fuel? I think you answered maybe with when you talked a little about what kept you excited, but what fueled you to keep on going? And what was when did you figure out your next as far as the next thing you that, that kept you hungry and that hunger you talked about today? Robert Shuler wrote a book called Peak to Peak. P-E-A-K, little known book. P-E-A-K to P-E-E-K. The more you do, the more you realize you can do. And you say, well, I've done this. What else could I do? <laughs> okay. And when you in alignment with doing something that's you, they did a, a, a survey the other day online, and they said, what are people looking for? You know what it was? Authenticity. Can I believe you? What is it that I can find that's me, that's real, that gives my life a sense of meaning and purpose and that will allow me to live a life that will outlive me? What is it? A job is what you get paid for. A calling is what you're made for. What is the calling on my life? Don't come for me. I didn't call an Uber. <laughs> nor Lyft. <laughs> yes, sir. What's the next question? What it, one absolutely inspired, man. Thank you so much. By the way, guys, per contract, this is the last this is the last question. Yes, sir. Uh what was your favorite all time favorite speech that you've given and why? I would say the Georgia Dome. And the reason I would say that is because I was in over my head. I came there expecting to speak to five hundred people. And Dexter Yeager, who made a million dollars every 17 hours in Amway and 50% of the volume of the company went through his organization, he said to me, I don't like you. And fortunately, my mentor, Mike Williams, said he's going to try and push your buttons. Don't get angry. Anger is a wind that blows out the lamp of the mind. And so I went on the stage ringing in my ears when he used the N-word. Damn. And I said to myself, you about to break Liberty City out. <laughs> I'm about to tear this room up with you up in here, up in here. And I decided I was going to be so dominant. He had a choice of 
Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, who had a big infomercial. But someone gave him, and this is why you have to have a compelling speech, the cassette tape of my, my becoming a disc jockey. Got to be hungry. You, got, you have a story in you that you're not aware of yet that will allow you to speak to the world. What is your name? You're, Joseph. So, Joseph? Joseph, when you said yes to this company, what is it that encouraged you to do that? Hope. I mean, uh, I saw my sister and brother-in-law successful, and I wanted to be a part of the environment, the energy. Yeah. Hi, my name is Joseph. How many of you have goals and dreams you'd like to achieve? Raise your hands, please. You know, when I look at my brothers and sisters and people that I have in my orbit, I decided that I wanted to do something with my life. Everybody repeat out to me, please. Jump out of line. Jump out of line. I heard this conversation about escape the matrix and, and what it was saying that most people follow their hurts and their herd. But the matrix, in order to escape, you must follow your heart. And I decided to operate out of the thinking of Henry David Thoreau, who said, do not go where the path may lead. Go where there's no path and leave a trail. Mm -hmm. Say it again, jump out of line. <laughs> and so in order to escape the matrix, come on, somebody, well... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see, I just took that J. Jump out of line. Because most people are in line. And working on jobs where they pay them just enough to keep them from quitting, and they work just hard enough to keep from getting fired. So you decided, oh, I don't want, this is not me. I'm jumping out of line. I'm not going to do this. I want to do something else with my life. Does that make sense? I want to take another question. If it's okay. Hundred percent. Huh? Hundred percent. Contact. We gotta go because we gotta get to the airport. So oh, we gotta get to the airport. We're doing the picture as well. Yeah. See, this fuse me. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'll get. I'll just get warmed up. Okay. Yeah. Let's take the group picture. Yeah. Thank you, Les Brown. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank you, Joseph. You hear that red is your kind of like your favorite color. So if you wouldn't mind opening up a little your gift here from all of us here as a thank you. And you know, my birth mother, the, her house is red. She painted it red. Is that right? Didn't know that. Very good. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a, excellent. You gotta make sure you stay warm. Whoa. Be nice to come. <laughs> you know they don't give our blankets on planes. <laughs> yep. Got no. Got just, yeah. And got I was about to buy a blanket. Yesterday. There you go. Yes, because I get cold easily. Really good. Oh, you should have. How much? How much? You know, people they they yeah. be lying. Say, oh, you shouldn't have. You know gotcha. <laughs> Thank then, you so much. And then we, we, oh yeah, there's, there's one, yeah, there's one more, yeah, there's one more in there, yep, yep. Make sure you get them toesies. Oh yeah. Yeah, yep. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah. Hook the brother up. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. He's wearing red exactly. socks right now. <laughs> and then, Mr. Lester, we've got uh, Zan here from one of the insurance companies we do business with. He's been watching you endlessly. Twelve straight years been with us. Listen to your tape. So he's got something here. Most consistent thing I've done over the past twelve years: I brush my teeth and listen to Les Brown in the morning. Oh, and you introduced me to Dr. Howard Thurman. Yes. And um, I... Howard Thurman said, two primary questions that one should ask oneself in life. Number one, where am I going? Number two, who's going with you? Wow. And if you ever ask those questions in the wrong order, you'll be in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. You ever been in a relationship where you were going one way and they were going in another? Yeah, you need to know where you going first so well, you won't grow apart. I love it. Um, and so I know, as you use them quite a bit in your work, this is a first edition copy. It's wrapped very tightly. First edition copy of uh, 
Howard Thurman's book, Deep is the Hunger. Whoa! And um, it's signed by him. Um, right here. <laughs> so this is yours. Um, I mean, this is really on behalf of all of us. Thank but you so much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I was thinking about him this Get morning. Hunger. He said, the ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them as they cross them. He said, but imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, mm -hmm. the ideas, the abilities given to you by life and you, for whatever reason, you never used those gifts. You never activated those gifts. You never moved on those dreams. And there they are standing around mm -hmm. your bed, looking at you with mm -hmm. large, angry eyes, saying, we came to you. And only you could have given us life. And now... We must die with you. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. crazy. Oh. Awesome. Got you. All right. Thanks, Patrick. We have a.